Welcome to Crawl Space. I'm Tim here today with Lance. How's it going, Lance? It's going great. How are you today, Tim? I'm doing all right, Lance. This is part two of our interview with Jessica Easterly's sister, Audrey, and her friend, Maria. And just a quick recap, Jessica went missing around August 12th of 2019, and her body was found just a couple of blocks away on August 22nd. And her body was actually found by her sisters, Audrey and Amanda, and one of their cousins. And they reported the body to the New Orleans Police Department. And as of today, there's still no cause of death determined. And check out part one to get the full context of this story. It's a really important story to share. Go to justice, the number four, jessica.org to learn more about this case. And if you have any information as to the cause of Jessica's death, you can also go to Crime Stoppers at crimestoppersgno.org or call 504-822-1111. Thanks, everybody. When we found her and when all those cops showed up there, there was about 20 of them. And I distinctly remember Lieutenant Allison talking to a homicide detective saying that this is a homicide. So have you spoken to the medical examiner? Me and my dad has gone down there and talked to the coroner 50 million times. And technically, by law, he is her legal next of kin. So there she sits inside of the morgue still. And as long as he contacts them, keeps in contact with them, then then they will hold hold her for him, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I do have to say, I'd rather her be there than her be cremated. And then because what if someone wants to do, a, you know, another autopsy on her? dig a little bit deeper then if she's cremated then there won't be no evidence so i'd rather her be there than you know him get her have you asked them to change the determination i well i have spoken to um the lady yes and um she w was emailing him with my concerns he was supposed to call me back, but he never called me back. And it's probably been about two weeks now because I call the morgue at least once every two weeks just to make sure she's there. So she knows who I am. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because I'm constantly calling and I've been there at least four times. She's the, the county medical examiner or coroner? No, it is the uh, I, the lady that works there. Okay. And so she tried to get the coroner to uh, to discuss making a change in the determination? Right. And that's when he didn't call you back. And w w what's the coroner's name? Uh, I believe it's Dwight McKenna, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Well, then uh, they're, we're putting this out to Mr. McKenna. Um, what are you doing? Yeah. What's going on? Well, and, you know, it's just it, it, it just makes no sense because technically the cops are supposed to. Um, OK. Here, I got the um, autopsy right here. And then Aaron O'Sullivan, MD, is the pathologist. Can you send us that? that? Is that public? Um, you know, could you share that? No, it's not public. Okay, so we couldn't post that or anything? No, but I, I, I plan on, um, on my just, justiceforjessica.org, I plan on posting some of it. So, um, but yeah, that's the name that's on here. I don't see another name. Well, first steps first, I think it's got to get uh, determined a homicide. That seems to be the first thing that needs to happen for it to even be officially investigated. <laughs> right. Like to putting it out to the entire city of New Orleans. Like what is a body can just be found clearly from homicide. You can have someone in, who's actually in law enforcement say this is a homicide and then it just dies. It goes nowhere. Right. And I believe that if, you know, if if all the entities would have followed, uh, you know, proper procedures, then more probable than not, this investigation would would be solved by now. And I mean, the detective is supposed to coordinate with the coroner and give him all the information so that way he can make, you know, uh, a determination 
if that it's a homicide because nobody's going to go, you know, we've heard from the detective, oh, well, she could have been in the woods and she could have fell and broke her jaw. No, that's not the way it fucking works. You know, I mean, are you really trying to tell me that? That's bullshit. She didn't go inside the woods and she didn't fall and break her jaw. You know, she didn't get a, a, a broken C4 vertebrae because, you know, she fell. Get, I mean, that's just, it's bullshit. Sorry for cussing, but that's, I'm, this just pisses me off. No, uh, by all means, cuss away. It, I mean, I could see if she had a, I could see if she had a history of going into the woods and maybe a history of being clumsy that you could report on repeatedly over and over and over again. But uh, I don't think she did. What she did have was a history of being abused by her husband. And she's found dead with a broken jaw and a, a broken vertebrae. I, you know, the no one called. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't go to the hospital ever to say, hey, I was in the woods and I fell. She did that with her husband. Right. And, you know, this, this autopsy report, it's, it, you know, it doesn't even mention, okay, my sister was blind as a bat. She could not see a foot in front of her, you know, without her contacts in. She had glasses, but she hated her glasses and she never wore her glasses. She always wore her contacts. It doesn't even say in here if, if she had contacts in or not. And if she didn't have her contacts in, which I'm assuming that, she didn't have them in because it doesn't say it inside the autopsy report, then how the hell did she get out to the woods? There's no way she would have been able to see to get out there. My, my sister was dumped there. And, and from the crime scene, it's obvious that she was dumped there. I can't imagine what this has done to your family. I, I mean, it's sorry for the dumb question, but what has this done to your family? It's ripped us apart. We're not even, you know, it's... It's... It's just terrible, man. It's just no, no family should have to go through this. And let me tell you, since I've been on Twitter, I've seen some, some things where, where the police are not doing their job. Jessica's not the only case at all. And it's, it's really sad. One, 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 one case in particular comes to mind and that's the justice for DJ, Amanda. That was her brother. They're trying to say that it was suicide. And there was, there's no way that it was suicide, <laughs> you know? I mean, he was right-handed, but sh he was shot in the back of the head on the left side. Like that, come on. From, from, a, from an upward angle. <laughs> right. So you yeah. know the case that I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, we had, we had her on. Yeah. Yeah, we spoke to Amanda recently. Yeah. And that's just, that's just one of them that stands out to me. And I, only because I talked to her, you know on a regular basis. And it's just so sad that, I mean, I don't understand. I mean, are cops, are they that desensitized to where they don't, they don't give a crap anymore because it's so, then maybe it's time to retire and go do something else and get some, you know, someone else in there that actually cares. Yeah. We, we have a conversation, this conversation a lot about, you know, how much work the police force has and how short staffed they are. And it's usually in reference to something that is, you know, 10 or 15 years old or older. But we're seeing this all the time, like more more often than not. We, we're, we're seeing this where these cases just are dismissed almost immediately. And it, I, I can't even imagine what you're going through with your sister to uh, literally the next day after finding her body yourself. It's, um, it's basically declared a, a cold case. It's in incredible to me. Yeah, that's what they said in January. Do your job. Just do your job. And, and if you can't, then quit. Right. Or hand it over to someone else. And you know what? Me and Marie and Amanda both told Detective Lund, look, I need for you to treat this as if this was your own sister. And if you can't do it or you're too overloaded with work, then pass it on to someone else. Because we need accountability for this. We need justice because this is not right. There's a there's a recurring theme that I have noticed um, because unfortunately being a part of this means very sudden eye opening exposure to other cases where the cops are just like, gee, sorry, not sorry, um, that if they can find anything about you as a victim that devalues you 
in their eyes as a member of society, case closed. If there's any kind of, you know, history of drug use, if there's any kind of criminal record, if there's any kind of, you know, alternative lifestyle, um, if you're anything less than on the straight and narrow, very conservative path of life, they don't care. You had it coming. You brought this on yourself. You associated with the wrong people. You lived the wrong way. You had the wrong life. And you should have just expected to get murdered. And everybody that loved you should just give up. It's not uncommon. And that's really frustrating. Like, justice is blind for a reason. She's wearing a blindfold for a reason. The scales tip based on the weight, not based on, you know, did you, did you, you know, have a 40 hour a week job, no, no kind of blemishes, no skeletons in your closet, make it to church every Sunday and, and tie the solid 10%. And apparently justice only applies to that demographic. Was there something about Jessica's lifestyle that, uh, you think fit her into that category? Um, there was, there was definitely, there was definitely some, some things going on, um, that the Jessica we all knew and loved growing up would never in a million years have participated in. But Justin is a pusher of, of what he likes. Um, and we've had contact with, with, you know, other people that have been involved with him. And it's like, here's this pill, here's that pill, here's this drug, take this, smoke that, like, and by the way, you need to entertain me sexually, and this is my newest escalated thing, because that's all he thinks about, is how to get high, how to get off, how to please himself, and if you want to survive around him, you better get in where you fit in. So Jessica has a history of fibromyalgia, which means just pretty consistent body-wide pain for no apparent reason. And the medication that she was prescribed to treat that had a tendency to make her sleep. And when she would sleep, because she took her meds to deal with the body pain that she was experiencing, and those medications, you know, unfortunately, they have a tendency to be addictive. So the more, the more you are prescribed to treat your very real symptoms, the more symptoms you have. It's, a, it's an awful, vicious, um, self-feeding cycle. So she would take her meds and want to lie down because that's how your medicine makes you feel. And that was reason enough for him to launch into a whole fight because he wanted her to be up all the time entertaining him because he's on everything under the sun that's a stimulant. And you can look at him and study his skin and his behavior. And if you talk to him for any amount of time, he'll tell you all about, you know, Adderall this and Vyvanse that and attention meds, attention meds. And it's like he's very erratic, very speedy all the time, like can't sit still, can't hold a straight line of a conversation. And so his solution to her not being entertaining enough, well, here's this Adderall. So now you've taken your pain meds, but now you can also sit here and entertain me and please me. And so you're stimulated. And then because the money was an issue, because she's too much of an anxious wreck dealing with him and being on the meds and the meds that he's giving her to counteract the meds that she's prescribed, that she fell solidly into disability because who can live that life at home and and be reliable and have a, a job and she would try to create work for herself she she started a business like jazzing up flip-flops um and trying to sell them and she would go out and try to like make a way for herself and he would follow her and and harass her if she went anywhere that she shouldn't be and she would find them extra work on the sets 
and they would show up to do this work. And if she talked to the wrong person, he would pick a fight and they would end up leaving early. Like he just made it impossible for her to survive as an adult. And it just, it just fed in and fed in and fed in. And so I think they, I think they ended up, well, she ended up feeling backed into a corner financially and he was very into online, you know, adult content. And I guess if you watch enough of it, you start to see that these people are making good money. And so that became the next avenue of income for them, other than the disability that she was getting was online entertainment. And we've had lots and lots and lots of contact with the people that they were reaching out to and working alongside. And Jessica was a studious person. So if she wanted to succeed at something, she would do her homework. And part of that is reaching out and making connections and, um, and, and figuring out how other people are successful at the things you want to be successful at. Well, when she would reach out to these people and discuss, um, the business aspect of making online content, adult content profitable, it was all very focused on the bottom line, all very, you know, professional. But he would reach out to the same people, especially since her death, and it was all very, like, heavy, breathy, sweaty, drooly. Like, he he offered to come, he tried to convince this one couple that is very high earning to do a charity show to put out adult content for the for the purpose of raising funds to help him lay Jessica to rest and by the way he offered his services to fly out to wherever they are and get in on that because he could tell when he was talking to the girlfriend that she just really wanted a piece of him so even while he's trying to get people to help him lay Jessica to rest because apparently that's a thing. He's trying to see if he can, he can get a little piece of the action too. There's no bottom, which beneath which he can't sink. He was trying to do a charity to, to lay Jessica to rest through another couple that performed online by, by showing up and screwing somebody else's wife. Yes. seems very inappropriate. Where, where does this guy come from? I'd also like to add, that this porn community, um, he was telling them that she passed away in November until I got on in, uh, on Twitter and, uh, you know, put Jessica's story out there. And I had about 20, 20, 30 little inbox messages, uh, stating she died in August. He said November. So, you know, he's, he's a fake, he's a phony and he's a piece of shit is what he is. And, you know, he was sitting there trying to give away her underwear and her lingerie and shoes, you know, if you donate, you know, and, you know, and not once did he ever put up a flyer of Jessica, nor did he make any pleas on social media. And, uh, you know, instead he, he he put her on porn sites trying to you know make money which you know it, and which by the way we got those shut down you know those those porn sites and i'm sure he probably has some out there because he's a he likes to do the whole fake name thing like uh what is it weapon guy and blah 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 you know what i'm saying just all that you know it's just a bunch of crap he's nothing but a piece of shit he's trying to profit off of you know my sister and stuff and well, and here's, here's the, big, the big takeaway from him um, changing how long she's been um, passed away is that he was still impersonating her online on these on these illicit websites and having all these lewd conversations and selling lewd videos of her um, to people under the guise of it actually being her. So he had to change 
when he when he reached out to these people to try to milk them and milk their sympathy, he had to pretend like she hadn't been deceased for all those months because he was impersonating her online and selling graphic videos and selling her things pretending to be her. Where did this disgusting human being come from? And how, how is he still walking the streets? This is incredible. That's what we want to know. That's what we want to know. And who are the people covering for this disgusting person? Like, how are you not ashamed of yourselves for not moving this forward? Like, not trying to uh, get, get, like, a clear predator? Uh, this guy's a maniac. From what I hear, he's camming with another girl. So if any cameras are out there and they can hear me, uh, I'd like to know who it is. Because I emailed the person that wrote the uh, the column, the story, about it and he has yet to email me back but i want to know who it is <laughs> well if he's camming with an and that was back in january jesus well she should be uh afraid for herself she needs to be warned right you know also i'd also like to let y'all know that uh when we found out that the detective didn't go looking or talk to them people that found jessica's id and her blanket uh, I made a formal complaint and uh, I talked to an investigator named Creighton on April 8th about it. And then I emailed him our complaints on the 14th. And then I emailed the complaints again on April 20th. And I've yet to hear back from them. So to me, either he knows somebody or, you know, it, because Jessica did porn, like who cares if she did porn? I, you know, it's like Maria was saying about, you know, the whole, you got to be up and up on the straight and narrow to get anything done. Yeah, for real. Like who cares if she did porn? Who who cares? What, like, look at what it, what this does like to the secondary victims. It, it, it doesn't, that, that should not, I mean, Maria said it really, really well, like really eloquently. There's a reason why justice is blind. There's a reason why that is a thing. It's not just a cliche. It's not just a saying. It should be the the way life is uh is lived, and it should be the way justice is carried out. But it's not. Right. Exactly. So it, you know, I mean, we we've just been we've been ignored and silenced and redirected from one place to another, and it's just it's very frustrating and. It's just, uh, you know, we want accountability. We want them to do their job. I haven't heard anything from the detectives. And I'm assuming Maria hasn't because anytime any of us hear anything, then we're always, you know, telling each other. I just have a quick question. Is there any other agency that you can reach out to that can help you out with this? Discuss getting the Louisiana Bureau of Investigation involved, um, but I don't think we've had any success there. We've reached out to the FBI. Um, we've tried to get ATF involved because he does sell firearms despite his felony conviction. With the serial number scratched off. Oh, okay. I mean, there's just there's no accountability for him. And according to, who did we hear it from that his mom used to take him down to the Ninth Ward to get really hard drugs, Audra. I can't remember who said that. Was it his uncle? No, I think it was his cousin. Or was it his uncle? I don't know. I don't remember. This is this is somebody that's been ruined his whole life. His mother enabled the living shit out of him. He would have tantrums and he would get whatever he wanted. They were they were involved in a, a, a fairly prosperous awning company um, there in the New Orleans greater area. And she would spend so much time, money and effort covering up the shit trail that he leaves behind him that she she managed to run the business into the ground and the family members that she was in business with bought her out and pushed her out of the business because he was such a liability. Does his family have a lot of deep roots in New Orleans? Are they do they go back generations and generations? What's his last name again? Durning. Right. And I've talked to an attorney and they're like 
you know, just in shock that he has not been picked up and that the he has not been questioned by police and, you know, that she's still in the morgue and, you know, so here we are, <laughs> you know, hoping somebody hears this, somebody will, you know, be like, oh, here, let me help y'all out, you know, let me see what's going on and, you know, hopefully get to the bottom of this and, and get justice because that's what my sister deserves because this is an injustice to her. Jeez. Well, my gosh. Uh, is there anything else that we haven't uh, discussed yet that you'd like to uh, cover here? I'm, I'm sure there's a lot, but it's just so much. It just really knocks the wind out of you because there, I mean, it's undeniable. Like you can't, you can't look at this in any other way than the way it is. There's, there's no second facet to this. And I, I, you know, and honestly, I still can't believe that this is even freaking happening, you know, and here we are almost a year later and it just, it just doesn't seem real to me. No. I'm so sorry. I do have uh, something that I do want to say. When we found Jessica's body, we told them that it was, it was her. And I don't know why they wanted DNA from my mom. Like that just made no sense to us. We were there. We identified her, but they still had to get DNA. That that doesn't make any sense. Do you know why they did that? That's really bizarre. That's really bizarre. It, it almost feels like a stall tactic to me. I think they officially have to have it, have um, the victim identified. So I I don't know if um if you had done that like in an official capacity. Yes, we did. Yes, <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> So, I mean, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And then they brought it to some place called Faces. It's a Faces Lab. And the Faces Lab, I believe, is from what I read online about it, it's when they can't identify somebody and then they recreate the face, you know. But why would you recreate it whenever we're telling you, that's my sister, and when you have DNA evidence from my mom, that just doesn't make any sense to me. So this whole entire thing's just been whack. During this time, the Hard Rock, how many days was it, Maria, that they got them people identified? Um, it was it was it was legit within seventy two hours. They had DNA back to identify the victim of the Hard Rock collapse. Meanwhile, we were sitting. A, it, to go even further, Jessica's autopsy was backburnered for somebody that was murdered after her because they they were like, oh, well, somebody else has come in. And I guess because their body was fresh, like they were killed, police was called, and they didn't sit outside and experience any level of decay was their excuse for pushing Jessica aside, but at that time, we all three were calling them all day long and harassing them and being like, what's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? At that point, that was their excuse for pushing her back, but they have literally done everything they can to stall. All of, all of, 95% of the effort demonstrated by New Orleans Police Department has not been to bringing this case to any resolution. It's been to managing us. And, and just to give you a little, a little insight, my mom did her swab on September 1st, and that DNA didn't come back until the, till the 8th of November. On the 24th of January... I was contacted by a by a cop, a New Orleans police uh, cop, and uh, Justin was detained for 24 hours because he went inside of this bar slash where you go eat at, and he, oh my God, he gave this girl a note that said something. He was trying to give away my sister's all her stuff, and he was. He gave her a note and said, do you like tactical knives? Do you like guns? Well, this freaked the girl out. Poor thing. It freaked her out. You know, she didn't know who he was. She wasn't on social media. She went back there and she talked to the cook and showed him the note. And 
Of course, he's like, oh, I know who this is. And he pulls it up on social media and it comes to my to my social media. And then all of a sudden, this poor girl is freaked out that this guy is sitting there giving her some note and wanting her to come over and get Jessica's, all of Jessica's belongings and sitting there asking her about scuba diving, um, tactical knives, guns. What else was there on that note, Maria? I don't have it in front of me. I I don't remember what else was in front of it. I'm sure I could get into our photos that we've shared and pulled it up. But it was it was just really creepy. And I think the girl's name was actually Jessica as well. And he he was like, you know, you remind me of her. And it's like, OK, but you murdered her. So if I remind you of her, I'm probably not stopping by. So this poor girl was just terrified out of her mind because, you know, and it was I don't I don't know if you've seen the sort of things that people that are on stimulants scribble down, but it was just kind of all over the place. And he, he was listing off like all of the nice things that she had and how he just needed to get rid of it. And then making comments about what a bitch his daughters are and how one of them should have been swallowed instead that his, his, 15 16 year old daughter who lives with him and has just had her stepmother murdered is just such a little bitch like you know it, like who says that who goes and tells some random stranger you know things like that when it's all out there and her co-workers were like you need to go say something like this feels very scary and she went in and had him committed because apparently the coroner is who you go to to have him committed so i don't know why the coroner would throw him in a psychiatric hold but won't hold him accountable for murder guy sounds like a real uh real friggin monster and it's frustrating that he's out there doing what he's doing and it's disgusting that he's, he can still say these things and do these things. Every layer you peel back is more disgusting than the last. Well, here we go. Let's, let's help to add to that public scrutiny. Um, so if you're listening to this, make sure to retweet this, make sure to discuss this on social media because this is an absolute injustice and it's really obvious. Absolutely. Thank you.